This talk is on the processing and display of MRI data. It is intended to be a supplement to a lecture that I uh, have fre frequently given with Professor Don Pluis on the basics of MRI physics, which we call spin gymnastics. This supplement is created because of uh, questions that, that have come to us on a recurrent basis on certain parts of the original talk. Uh, therefore, uh, we felt it would be worthwhile to go over certain of these questions in greater detail and then to record the uh, talk as a video and have it available for each individual's use at the individual's convenience. This short presentation will discuss how MRI data is processed and displayed. The MR receiver coil is the part of the MRI system that receives signal from the object being scanned. The data that is received by the coil is an induced voltage in the coil consisting of multiple frequencies and amplitudes. It has a very complicated waveform in its raw state. The Fourier transform is the mathematical tool most commonly used for processing this type of information and is used for almost all MR imaging. This presentation is a simplified pictorial demonstration of the Fourier transform and how the Fourier transform is used to process and display MRI data. Let's look at a wave as it evolves over time. We'll start with something very simple. Uh, we look at this sine wave. It goes through one full cycle over one second and we have assigned an arbitrary scale to the vertical axis. We see it has an amplitude of three units above the baseline. So we would describe this wave as having a frequency of one cycle per second, an amplitude of three units, which we could represent in textual form as we see in the upper left, or simply as a pair of numbers a one and a three. Let's look at a couple uh, other waves of different frequencies and different amplitudes. The next one has a frequency of three cycles over one second, and it has an amplitude of one. The next wave has a frequency of eight cycles per second and an amplitude of two units. If we then add all these waves together over each fraction of a second, we would display it as the graph on the bottom. It looks like a pretty complicated waveform. It would be difficult to tell what the component frequencies and the component amplitudes are of the frequencies that contribute to this wave. Because the, this wave is composed of multiple different frequencies and the amplitude varies. Another way of displaying the, the same data is as follows. If we look in the upper row, that same data could be displayed as an amplitude versus frequency graph, where the amplitude is displayed as a blue column of three units tall and placed on the frequency axis that represents one cycle per second. Similarly, we could do this with the other graphs as shown in the next row down, this is a frequency of three with an amplitude of one unit. The next one uh, demonstrates that the frequency is eight cycles per second and has an amplitude of two units. And if we now add all this data together, it's a much simpler way of looking at the data. We see that is composed of three discrete frequencies, each of different amplitudes. So if we were going in the reverse direction using the waveforms in the leftmost column, it would be difficult to disassemble the complicated waveform into its individual components amplitudes. But if we look at the middle column, it's a relatively simple task. The relationship between the leftmost column and the middle column is the Fourier transform. 
And then we can take this one step further. And if we look at the bottom row, rather than displaying uh, the amplitudes as the height of blue columns, we could simply represent them as dots on a single linear axis where the either the size or the brightness of the dot represents the amplitude at the particular frequency. Remembering, of course, that these graphs are a pictorial representation of certain numbers. So if we take a second look at the bottom right, we see that that complicated waveform consists of frequencies of one cycle per second with an amplitude of three, three cycles per second with an amplitude of one, and eight cycles per second of amplitude two. The same type of analysis can be carried out for things or functions that vary over a unit of distance rather than over a unit of time. Uh, this is called the spatial domain rather than the temporal domain. So in this example, I have drawn a relatively thick line across the top left of the image that uh, varies in whiteness going from left to right. It starts as a neutral gray. It becomes white, then becomes gray, then becomes black and becomes gray again. So it's gone over one full cycle in color variation over a unit of distance of one meter. So in the spatial domain, it would be said that this line has a frequency of one cycle per meter. And if we assigned numbers to the gray scale, where gray is zero and white is three, we would say that the white part of this line has an amplitude of three above the baseline grayscale. And we could represent it as a wave over a distance of one meter where the amplitude of the wave varies from zero representing gray up to three representing white, back to zero representing gray, minus three representing black, and back to zero representing gray. If we then did the same type of Fourier transform on this line, we could represent it the same way. We could represent it as having an amplitude of three units, uh, in this case, units of whiteness at a frequency of one cycle over a meter. And then we could collapse this data down further into a dot if we wish to so display the information as a single dot on the frequency axis at the position of one cycle per meter, and the brightness of the dot would have an amplitude of three. So this works very well for something that varies in one dimension. How about if it varies in two dimensions? Well, if we tried to represent that data in the bottom left-hand image, that square, that single white dot of amplitude three would only represent the function, uh, the variation in uh, signal intensity in the x direction, uh, and if it has no variation in the white in the y direction, it would be adequate. But what if something also varied in the y direction? Let's look at the situation if we have spatial information that varies in two directions. On the bottom, we have the example we have previously seen where we have spatial information that varies over one cycle per meter in the X direction, and we've represented it as a single white dot of amplitude three on the X frequency direction equal to one cycle per meter. If we now have a second a square where the variation in signal intensity is in the vertical or y direction, 
and we change the frequency to three cycles of variation over one meter of distance in that vertical or y direction we'd have we would say it has three cycles per meter in the y direction and we've changed the amplitude to have an amplitude of two rather than amplitude of three if we put these two things together we would get an image like that but we could decompose that and represent it as a frequency in the x direction as already shown of one with amplitude three and a frequency in the y direction of frequency three and amplitude two if we did this for every possible frequency say up to 128 or 256 different frequencies each of different amplitudes we would end up displaying these dots uh, in the x and y directions and it would look like this uh, and what this is is a pictorial representation of amplitudes which is represented by the intensity of each point of each spatial frequency in each of the x and y directions which is determined by the position of the point the axes when we're dealing with spatial frequencies are conventionally labeled as k sub x and k sub y but it's important not to lose uh, sight of the fact that each dot in this single graph represents a frequency in the x direction a frequency in the y direction and an amplitude of those frequencies so what we saw at the last part of the last slide was this picture uh, this is a pictorial representation of the numerical values of the frequencies and their amplitudes that come out of the MRI scanner into the MRI receiver coil. Uh, and it is referred to as two-dimensional Fourier space or simply as two-dimensional K space. Uh, the same uh, can be extrapolated to three dimensions if you collect data a frequency data in the z direction so the third dimension becomes kz in addition to kx and ky and in this case we have 3d Fourier space uh, or 3d k space this brings us to the summary frequency is the number of times that something is repeated over a period of time or over a distance in space the Fourier transform is a mathematical tool that allows a complicated waveform consisting of multiple frequencies and different amplitudes to be decomposed into a sum of simple sine waves of discrete frequencies. The induced voltage in an MR receiver is this type of complicated waveform, so it lends itself well for Fourier analysis. The conventional way of displaying this MRI data is a graph where the intensity of each dot represents the amplitude of each spatial frequency at a particular point in time. The position of each dot represents the spatial frequency in each direction in units of cycles per unit length. To conclude, a single graph can accurately show all the data obtained from every position in the object being scanned over the entire measurement time. It can be displayed as a single picture and the typical representation is shown at the bottom right. That brings us to the end of this short lecture. Thank you for your attention.